Starship Vigilant, a Star Trek Adventures campaign. So I was just saying to everyone, all, all I really wanted to do, and I, I thank you very much for, for coming along, um, and I, I promise I won't keep you for too long. I, I just really wanted to have a chance to chat chat about the, we, we, we'd mentioned about characters, and I know, I know that all of you have kindly got a bit of stuff about what, what your character's um, kind of journey would be. Um, so I wanted to get that down, you know, for posterity, um, and, and also have a, just have a general a quick chat about about the campaign as a whole and thoughts about it and also um then also just a few a few thoughts about what i was going to propose to do next and I, I know i've spoken to uh to you karen and to mike sort of individually about some of the stuff i've been thinking about doing um but again i just thought i'd um i'd, I'd get that out there and um and again this just allows us to tie it you know put a bit of a bow on it really yeah um so, okay, well, so listen, so this is, uh, I'm not even going to do the Starship Vigilant thing because it's not really, but um, I mean, who wants to, who wants to go first? Someone want to give us their, give us their little, um, little, little thoughts on what, where their character ends up? I don't mind who goes first. Shall I go first? I accept mine's yes, probably shortest because it was, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely nowhere near, near three pages worth. Um <laughs> It depends thought, how big your writing is, though, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I feel that Giara um, has really, really enjoyed her time on active duty on starships, um, but that she probably has felt that it's about time to retire from going out and about. Not because she wants to finish contact with Starfleet or anything like that. Um, she actually wants to start teaching at the academy brilliant so she's she's going to run a course on um advanced advanced warp core engineering improvisation love it um and she'll she'll bring into that all the all the things that she's picked up when she's been gallivanting around <laughs> with the crew um she's found love which is Ooh. which is great so she's um this is found... my favorite bit go on <laughs> okay um she's found an Orion um, called Lavas, so um, they're they're now married. So she has a wife. Um, they decided not to have any children, though, together. But they have amassed a rather large collection of long-haired guinea pigs. Um, <laughs> they're quite partial to tribbles, but obviously tribbles come with yeah their own risks. <laughs> yeah, quite they're quite prolific. Um, so they've got these long-haired guinea pigs, and they've named them all after the crew of the Vigilant. <laughs> Um, and they they treat them like their children. They're spoiled <laughs> rotten, and they get given the odd hobnob as well. You might want to think about that after you've heard mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I think that's absolutely. Uh, I think that's absolutely fantastic. And I, I I thank you again for sending me that last night. I, that, that really was um, much appreciated. I just love this. I love that whole. I love the whole positivity of that. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, I think that's fantastic. So thank you so much for that. And again, you know, thank you for Giara. And um, yeah, brilliant. brilliant oh, thank, you for, thank you for the opportunity to take her on adventures. It's been an absolute blast. Um, uh, right. her. Well, like I say, we'll, we'll come, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But anyway, um, right, Karen, how about you? Um, yeah, so, so Co Kolish is, um, she's quite lost, actually. Um, so she, she uh, reluctantly, um, took on an assignment to um, join the crew of the Vigilant, um, which she believed was going to be short term. And she, she was doing her duty, so she didn't put up too much of a fuss. She was given orders, so she did what she had to do. Um, but uh, over the time she spent with the crew of the Vigilant, um, she, she softened to them. Um, and she learned to sort of respect them and their ways of doing things um, to an extent that she became really torn between her new crew and her old ties. Um, so when anything ever came up that sort of was a, was a, a, a dilemma between the two, 
um, she was she was always stuck. Um, and then she felt not necessarily a betrayal because she doesn't quite know the full situation, the ins and outs of it. But the captain who took her on board and who treated her with the respect and honour that she was frankly surprised to to get from Starfleet. Um, there was, you know, when Naismith took her on board, he treated her like anyone else. Um, and then when he left and Kaz took over, Kaz was someone that she also had learnt, you know, they'd spent time together and she knew, um, and she respected Kaz. Um, and for Naismith to come back and then to arrest what she considered to be almost a family member. I don't know. She felt, she felt lost. She felt betrayed. There was two people she respected and neither of them had given her any inclination as to what was going on initially. Um, so she, yeah, she's a bit lost. She, so she has, she's left her duty with Starfleet. Um, but, She's also not returned to her Klingon position um, because she's, I don't know, she's got trust issues at the minute. She doesn't know what to do with herself. So she's, she's sort of soul searching a little bit. Um, so she's traveling the galaxy. Um, she's probably got a small crew uh, who change frequently um, because she sort of pushes them away. She drives them too hard or she's untrusting of them. So someone will leave, and then at the next port, she'll hire someone else. And so she's, she's sort of floating around, trying to find purpose and not getting close to anyone. So unfortunately, her, her, her story isn't playing out quite as um, nicely as Giara's. I absolutely love that. I was she can always come around and see the guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting a little bit... I was feeling a little bit teary then, to be honest. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh, I mean... I, I just absolutely, I just absolutely love that. Um, yeah, and I, it's so fitting for yeah. And I have no doubt that she will find um, she will find her place at some some point. But as you say, there, yes, trust issues. That's a very interesting point. I hadn't really considered that, but um, I think Mike, now's probably a good time then for you to fill us in on um, right, the yeah. with, with Kaz. <laughs> right, this. Some of you may know Kaz has been around for quite a while and she's a character I used from another cam another game I ran with Steve before we started the Vigilant campaign. And anyway, this is this more or less explains her motivation through the entire campaign. And it's not really um some of the stuff you might remember, some of the stuff you won't. Okay. Uh personal journal, Kaz. New Zealand, <laughs> New Zealand penal colony. I'll edit that bit out, it's fine. No, don't, don't, that's all you know. New, Ze <laughs> New Zealand penal colony. I suppose I have held family values in high regard. Guess it's because I'm a Cushion. I joined Starfleet because it felt like family. And the oath, Starfleet's, Starfleet's promise, was a, was a great motivator to myself and my sister. I began, uh, I began began to become disillusioned with Starfleet after she died. After she was sorry, after she was left to die, Starfleet was unable to unable or unwilling to go go back and pick up uh go and search for their life pods. Uh, uh, uh yeah life pods up. They broke their promise. But I moved on, putting the, putting it behind me, trying to settle in with a new new crew. Uh, but due to the, due to a freakish accident, we time travelled, and we met the doomed crew of the USS Constellation, <coughs> killed over a hundred years ago by the, by a doomsday machine. Uh, we were able to save about forty, but we uh, watched three hundred eighty people die when that uh, when that thing destroyed the planet. When we got back, I approached Starfleet to mount a rescue. Uh, we could bring them into the future without without altering the timeline, but they refused. They broke their promise. <laughs> uh, 
And so, and so Lieutenant Miller and myself um, planned a rescue of our of our own. We planned to take the vigilant back back and rescue the the other survivors, but we needed a way to do so, to do this. We figured we figured that the uh, traveling into the past uh, via slingshot was the only option, but the calculation to do so was beyond me or our or our facility. I ran simulations on the vigilant, but the computer was not up to the tr up to the task, and I was nearly I was nearly um, detected by Sergeant Kalish and the chief engineer. So they looked for other ways. Uh, through a Ferengi, I was put into contact with a, with um, someone who could help. This turned out to be an Orion, and and that's where it all that's where it all went pear shaped. Um. Words got out, <laughs> um, generating a lot of interest. Who wouldn't want the, uh, to be able to time travel? As a result, several Starfleet personnel were killed on uh, the render station due to uh, uh, due to a ball I started rolling. Someone else took the rat for it, but it was my fault, my responsibility. Uh, the reason reason was never never found behind behind those deaths, so my plan continued. Then I was made captain of the vigilant, and so I sent word to my contact that we were ready, ready to proceed. My plan my plan plan at the next layover was for myself and Miller to take the vigilant and. Uh, and rendezvous with my contact, and then use the calculations to, to slingshot into the past and rescue the crew of the constellation. And that's when it all went, that's when it all fell apart. Uh, a former crewmate, Captain Naismith, and of the USS Lincoln, got word through his through his, uh, through his arrival contacts of what I was planning, and he alerted Starfleet, and a, a warrant for my arrest was issued. And that's where we are. That's what she was up to. You're going to say? No, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm digesting. That's, yeah. Uh... So, so basically, there was a scenario I ran which um, a Starfleet member was killed, and Kaz was implicated in that. Yeah. She was also. There was also issues with the computer, which was caused by her running, basically the light speed uh, slingshot calculations on the vigilant. The computer wasn't up to it. And so, yeah. So, but her um, um, motive for doing so was to try and rescue the crew, and, the right. crew. and that's where he is. Basically, she's ne at the moment. She's in the new, um, in my head, my timeline. She's going to spend the next five years in the, on the New Zealand penal colony. Um, she then gets released and basically goes as an independent and becomes a tramp, a captain of a tramp freighter, and that's where she was going that's 1879 i think it was steve uh, yeah that's right so that's something so it's right it's right so we, fin we finished our game in we uh, our campaign finished in in uh, 2372 so yeah yeah because it was just <laughs> that it, it was after the um nemesis i think yeah so there you go that's what she's been up to that's where wow. she is and why she did it and and Mike's been sitting on that for most of the uh, well most for longer than the vigilant campaign. But he, he always had a he always had a kind of a tragic um, mm. story in mind for Kaz, which um, again, you know, it's not it's not well, it's, it, 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 it's not it, it, all it tragic, but it's it, it, it wasn't necessarily tragic. It was just that she was a Starfleet officer. She, when I originally created the character, she was a Starfleet officer, a bit, or she was an ex Starfleet officer. And this yeah. whole, basically the whole idea of this campaign was to, you know, I knew she wouldn't die, but uh, you know her her ending wouldn't be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she would she, she wouldn't be in the next one. So I've got to roll up a new character. <laughs> but that was that was the rationale behind her, anyway, for what it was worth. Well, I mean, kudos. Like I say, I'm. Um, uh, firstly, I just wanted to say that I'm I'm so. Um, what's the word? Humbled. Is that a word. That's the word. Just humbled by the fact that this little this little game of ours has um, 
you know, over these last few years has generated so much creativity, really. I mean, you know, um, the fact that everyone showed up every week and, and all of the input everyone put in and, um, you know, the um, the depth of the characters and the depth of the setting and some of it's in the writing and some of it's in the, you know, in the in the game. But I think a lot of it came from uh, what you all brought to it. And, you know, it's, well, it's Steve, definitely... Steve, credit to you because I couldn't tell what was written in the in the text that you've got and what was just created at the table. I think it all just merged perfectly. Well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> um, it's, it's like I say, it's... I mean, I've, I've always tried to have my approach to it to be to try and be as relaxed as possible. I mean, I know th this campaign has, has, has involved a quite a bit of um, exposition because there is stuff that has to be delivered to get you through the story. Yep. Um, but I think we've had fun with it as well. And again, I'm, I'm some of my, my favorite things. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget the ice hockey episodes. Yes. Um, they were, they were, <laughs> they were brilliant. And, and considering yeah. they were spun out of such a, a, a very slight, premise um you know they they were a, a genuine lesson to me in you know as if i needed teaching because you know you learn it every time when you do this thing but the fact that if you if you let the players have room you know give them a give them a concept give them a, a situation and just let them go with it you know that that made that much more entertaining than it probably should have been <laughs> um and similarly with you know, just too many things to mention, really. I mean, I, drunk I'm, Vulcan I'm, for starters. What's that? A drunk Vulcan for starters. You know, drunk Vulcan. You know, broken plumbing. <laughs> um, you know, um, a steel. Um, <clears throat> all, all of that stuff. Um, you know, Tompkins, Jenkins, whatever his name was. <laughs> you know, all of those little in jokes, and uh, and you know, I genuinely, um, uh, because Mike and I have been playing. RPGs in the Star Trek universe for since about eighty four when the FASA mm. game came out originally. I mean, I mean, the Vigilant was originally um, a ship from ship from another game that we ran a few years. Ago. Yeah, the Vigilant. The Vigilant uh, began life in around about nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, under the captaincy of um, Arlen it, Ryback, I believe. Uh, well, it was it was him briefly, but then it was Franock. So Haranok was mm. was a, a a lot of the crew were a carryover from that original. Yep. Mm. Um, um, premise, but it, it never really took off. But again, I always like the notion of the vigilant. You know, the small ship. Um, the fact that you could have a crew that you could get to know. Because much as I love the bigger ships, you know, four hundred and fifty, a thousand crew members is too much. Really yes, makes, it makes it too easy. You've got too much manpower, and it's a lot more. The yeah. threat's a lot more there if you've only, if, if there's only if you're only got a small ship. Uh, no, yeah, I, I agree. Keep... So I. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, generally, I, I, you know, I don't, again, I don't want to bang on too much, but um, I, I, you know, it, it was a, a real excellent pleasure to do it. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted us to, to finish it, because I think it's important that mm -hmm. with something like this, that you, you know, much as I love, and, and I don't want to diss on Digger, <laughs> but, you know the um the the Lanos Kellin campaign's been going for you know twenty plus years, but I don't think it will ever finish. And I and I I wanted to have something with a a, a beginning, you know, a beginning and an end. Yeah. Because I think I think that's part of the storytelling. Yep. Process, you know, as well as the the fun you have on the way, but also part of the the arc of it is to is to have it begin and have it end. And it doesn't mean it's the end; it just means it's an end. Yes. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and you're you're a GM as well, Kevin. So, uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Uh, I, I tell you why that Kevin was on my brain because I meant to mention earlier, and I apologise that Kevin couldn't make it tonight because he's on holiday. So, Kevin was playing on my mind. Yeah, but I was just going to. So, Kevin, yeah, I was just going to ask you because I mean, you, you're a GM. So, um, how, how did you how, how do you feel about it? Have you? So I you... I love I absolutely love a long game where you can just really get into the nitty-gritty as much as you want but i appreciate uh an ending because otherwise you always feel like something is unfinished it doesn't yeah. matter how long you go on for it's always kind of like well it's 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 not right it's not right it's not right when you do have a proper ending to it so when i've when i've run long campaigns mm. i've had i've almost put chapters into it so i've had endings throughout the campaign that yeah, we've sort of like you can 
segment parts of the campaign that bit is done that bit is now done we can move on from that and often my players have rolled up new characters and some haven't and that way you've got connections to the old and then you you bring it in and make it fresh again yeah Um, so yeah i i i love a long game but i really appreciate um i mean all of you guys watch tv stuff right how much Mm -hmm. better is a show that has a proper ending yeah, hundred percent. Um, yeah. It needs yeah. it needs something needs if for you to really love something truly, it's got to have an ending and a good one. Mm. You don't do it justice other, otherwise. Agreed. It needs to have that structure. It does. It does. But also, I think it's important for the characters. And again, you know, given just going back to what the three of you, you know, have 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 uh, you know gifted us tonight with your your little story arcs there. Again, I think that's that's what that's the thing that I really wanted was these characters to have a have a life and you know i genuinely feel that all, all of the characters that we've had and you know some of obviously we had some of the players along the, along the way mm. uh, uh, we had josh obviously who was who played um another engineer i do like to joke about the fact we get we've gone through more engineers than spinal tap have had drummers for <laughs> those of you who get that reference but um well we've had quite know, a few captains as well if you think about yeah, it yeah exactly um but again i like the fact that that you know, again, Kali, you know, Kalish, for example, had that journey of, you know, start where she started and where she ended. Yeah. And again, even even the broken trust is is part of that, um, you know, that arc and that story. And there's a story to be told there for her getting her trust back and for her getting her, you know, her honor. All, 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 all I want so back, you know. to say is, this is Kaz speaking. Kalish, it was nothing personal. Every, everybody is everybody well, you might not think so but i think kalish might no. have a different, a different take yeah, on it. that's the, that's the point is that kaz is one of the one of the cation traits is that they um they form family groups and sort of thing yeah and so she you know basically if if it was the if it was the crew of vigilance she would not you know move heaven and earth to and but the other thing about Kaz, of course, is she was motivated by the loss of her sister. So that was yeah, yeah. Um, that was that was the start of it, where she was becoming dis- disillusioned with Starfleet. But you know, <laughs> even our even our captains, you know, um, Haranok. Mm. So Haranok began as again, he was a holdover from the original iteration of uh, Vigilant, and he was um, he was intended to be the the Bolian from Deep Space Nine. If you if you I don't know, you know, and again, I know. You're not as familiar, you know, Karen and, and Sarah Jane. You're probably not as familiar yeah. with it as we are. But in um, the, the the pilot of Deep Space Nine, when uh, Cisco's mm-hmm. on the Saratoga, and the the sort of tactical officer there is a Bolian, and that that was always meant to be Haranok. And oh, okay. His backstory is that he was friends with Cisco. That's how come he ended up getting command of the Vigilant. Is that he was working because because Cisco. Um, in 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 canon, Cisco worked at Utopia Planitia uh, mm. on on the Defiant project, Which and that's is, how we, come we, he, he was able to get the Defiant. Uh, yeah. And so, my in, in my thinking, Haranok is his kind of was his kind of associate on that project, and that's why Haranok was given the command. But Haranok also had issues, and as we know, he had, you know, he eventually, you know, kind of couldn't cope with it, and and you know, he kind of drifted off um and again you know naismith had issues with um his time in the orion sectors and mm. so i like the fact that none of these characters were you know particularly um perfect and that that you know deep space nine is a big inspiration um for the tone of it because of you know uh, narendra station you know that kind of setting is very much a deep space nine influenced uh campaign but um again i i couldn't be happier with with the way that you know these characters played out um i will try and get kevin to to, to ping us some thoughts at some point as well because I, I am interested to, to see I, I dread to think what he thinks um osterhagen will end up doing <laughs> <laughs> he's in the cell next to me yeah he probably will be either that or he's running the prison um yeah but Okay, so I mean, again, I, I I could go on for hours about it, but I really I really don't want to waste too much of your time. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, so was was again just briefly about what my thoughts are. So um, I know Karen and I had a conversation. So um, my my thinking is that I would like to propose that we take a, a break for uh, probably over the summer, just to give I need a I need a chance to 
kind of um, recharge a little bit because I've got um, I've got a, I'm obviously playing in Kevin's um, slow horses slash vampires campaign um, which is going on at the moment. Um, I'm also currently running um, uh, a, a filling game for Digger, which I've got one more session to do of that. So I'd like to propose that we take a little bit of a break, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute because Kevin did throw me a bit of a curveball. I, th- I think you saw in the you saw in the chat that Kevin had mentioned um, that he was yeah. willing to run his Klingon game. Um, yeah. I'm, not sure, I'm not. I'm not sure if I if I want to play in it immediately. Mm-hmm. However, I, I will certainly. Um, and I know Kevin. I know you. You, well, you and I talked, and I know that you would. I, I think you would also probably benefit from a bit of a break, right? I know mm-hmm. you've got you know other th- more important things going on than uh, some stupid little game. So um, the other. The other thing I'm on this on this thing, I do, I've got the bones of a lost episode, which yeah. so at some point, which would be the full, which would be the crew of the vigilant again, but it's because you say it's set prior to the end of the campaign. So, but that's only if there's interest and people people generally want to do it. Yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll <laughs> But my, my thinking was to suggest that we take a break probably until about August, maybe. Because mm-hmm. bearing in mind that we do every three weeks. I mean, it's now it's now April. So what's that? One, three, four. So you probably we'd probably be missing about maybe four or five sessions overall. Um, but I, I could benefit from a break. Uh, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I, I'm that's my my thinking. Um now Karen and I also had a, and Mike and I have had a chat as well that that what we're we're thinking about, what I'm thinking about doing with Star Trek Adventures is to come back with um, potentially a, a campaign set during the time of the Dominion War, um, and we would potentially use the Vigilant again because uh, the Vigilant would fit into that uh, conflict pretty well. Um, I, it's early days for my thought process at the moment, but that was my, uh, you know, thinking about what I wanted to do next with Star Trek Adventures. I mean, there's been talk of doing. You know, um, the, you know the Lexington is still around, and but but for me, I kind of and and I agree with Karen because again, Karen and I had a chat about this, and I you know, I think the Vigilant is a is a great setting, and it would be a the different. Thing is, setting. The thing the, the the thing is with the Vigilant is, I mean, you could put an entirely new crew on it, but it would be the the ship itself would be familiar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shit. So what? Hello. What was that? That was my that was my knee. Okay. <laughs> I twinged it. Um, so anyway, so I'm I'm thinking at the moment. My thinking is that 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 would be something which I would be looking working towards coming back to do. But um, I also would. What I'm also proposing is that I would maybe do something different in August, starting or you know July, or August, or whatever, um, and run um, something else for a few months. I would probably propose to start. A new Star Trek campaign probably next early next year, yeah. Um, because again, I I need some time to sort of figure out what that looks like and do a bit of preparation and this that and the other. But I also don't want to let this group sort of uh, fall apart for lack of activity. Um, so my my thinking about coming back is I I what I would like to propose, and I do want to open it up to you to to give me your thoughts because again, this is just a suggestion. Uh, one mm. of the things that I've wanted to do for a long time is I've wanted to run um, there's a, an old uh, superhero game that I'm a big fan of called Golden Heroes, which came out in the 80s. Um, and I've long wanted to run um, through the, the published adventures that were brought out for that game. I've never run them all. I've run, I've run a couple of them. Kevin's run a couple of them, but a long time ago. Uh, so, so what I was thinking of as a bit of a palate cleanser um, would be to um, get everyone to roll up some superheroes and to run through some of that for a few sessions uh, to give us a bit of a change of pace, a bit of a change of tone. Um, and then, like I say, with a, with a longer goal of coming back with um, Star Trek Adventures um, early in the new year. Because also, um, for those of you who don't know, Star Trek Adventures have got a second edition coming out in August. Um, so again, I'd, I'd want some time to get my head around that a little bit. Although I think it's, I think there's, you know, not going to be massive changes. But um, again, going into a war, a war setting campaign. Um, although you know, I'm not intending to do everything as a as a war scenario. But 
uh, the setting would benefit from having uh, the, the new streamlined sort of combat rules and ship combat and all that stuff. So, so anyway, w waffle aside, that's my thought. Take a break for a few, for, for two or three months, just to give everyone a bit of a, a bit of a break, um, and then come back with something different in in August, say. Um, play that for a few months, and then in the meantime, be preparing to do Star Trek Adventures again, um, and then embark on another run aboard the Vigilant. So. I'm going to stop talking. What's everyone's thoughts on that? Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, Anybody sounds up? absolutely fantastic to me. Yeah, yeah, I was. I'm, I'm happy to hear all of that. Okay, well, and to be, to be yeah, perfectly I mean, honest, Steve, it doesn't really again. matter how. It to be perfectly honest, it doesn't really matter how long you take a break for. I won't get bored and wander off because this is my favourite way to waste time. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice of you to say so. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I know. I agree. And and again, I'm I'm. Although I say I need a break, I mean, you know, as I say, it, it doesn't mean I stop thinking about it. And um, it, it's merely a break to give me, again, to have a bit of distance. I want to go back and do a bit of admin on some of the vigilance stuff. There's some of the earlier audio recordings that I want to try and track down and get those sorted out. Because although I've been very good since episode 21, I think of the um, sessions so most of those that the bulk of between 21 and 66 are all now on youtube there are some of the earlier episodes which i've got i'm sure i've got recorded which um i want to try and find sort out so there's a bit of that i want to do i want to do a bit of tidying up on the vigilant website to sort of again you know have it as, as a bit of a testament to what we did and um wrap all that up so that that's all stuff i'd be doing in the background um and then like i say golden heroes is a, is a very different animal i mean mike's played it and played it quite recently um, Golden Heroes is, um, it, it, like I said, it was released by Games Workshop in the 80s. And the fun, one of the fun things about it is that when you create characters, that the character creation is random. Um, so what we would, what I would propose is that we do like a session zero um, where we would just roll up characters. Um, I've, I'm currently in the middle of a, I set myself a stupid challenge, which was to roll up a character a week for Golden Heroes over the whole year. Um, so I'm I'm currently on week 13 out of 52, um, and to be fair, Golden Heroes has been fantastic. I've I've rolled up you know 13, broadly speaking, you know very different characters, and and it, so so the good thing is you don't need to have a, an idea. I'm not you know not everyone's a comic fan, not everyone's read comics, not everyone's got that mentality. But with Golden Heroes, it, it, you don't have to have that because it does most of the work for you. Um, and and actually, the rolling up of the characters is 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 pretty much as fun as the game itself. Um, and the reason I wanted to run through those scenarios is that um, they they brought out two published um, adventures. Um, there's a, a scenario in the book in in the game, and then White Dwarf magazine also released. Um, there's like half a dozen um, adventures that they published as well. And so, although I would not expect that we would get through all of that, you know, before going back to Star Trek Adventures. Um, again, for me, it would just be an opportunity to have a bit of a palate cleanse, do something completely different. Um, again, superheroes is not everyone's cup of tea, but the thing with Golden Heroes is it's it's British. Um, the, the setting is British. It's not American. Um, and it's also probably going to be a period piece, i.e. I'm, I'm planning to probably run it as if it was had taking place in the 80s because that's when the game was written. That's when the scenarios were written. So no mobile phones, none of that stuff. Fantastic. Um, so anyway, so that's my thinking. Um, and obviously I will keep in touch. We're not, it's not like I'm just going to go quiet. I just, I'll keep in touch with you all on the, on the STA uh, channel. Cause again, um, I, I will be putting out some other bits and bobs. Um, and I haven't spoken. So with, as, with regards to Kevin, however, I will, I will go back to Kevin because again, he'd offered to run this Klingon game starting literally in three weeks time. Um, if if any if you want to take him up on that, of course I'm fine with that. I probably won't do it uh, because, like I say, I want to kind of get on with some other bits and bobs. But um, and and also if he then wants to come back and do it later in the year, again that's an option. Um, but I'm I'm also you know I know as I say, Kevin's got plenty on his plate. Um, I also want to cut down to back back to like one game every three weeks just for a few months to give myself a bit of time to catch up on some other bits and bobs. So um, I'll I'll suggest to him that if he wants to offer it to you all, and if if you you three want to join in, I've got no problem with that. I won't be offended, um, but I probably won't play in it. Um, and the same goes with Mike's game. You know, we can always fit that in. Um, but for me, I will probably just take that break and and come back in August, and then 
we'll jump into Golden Heroes, and then, like I say, we can always fit in the Klingon game another time, or we could even arrange it separately. I I, I don't know. I'll speak to Kevin about it. Um, yeah, as, as I as I've said to Steve previously, um, I've uh, my time is I wouldn't say my time is precious at the minute, but I find that I don't have enough time to. I've just got a load of bookkeeping work come in. I've got the kids, which are. I mean, they're kids. They don't need any more explanation. Um, so uh, as much as I do need downtime, as much as I do need downtime, it's hard to commit to yeah. scheduled downtime. Um, so f- uh, for a little while, I mean, Star Trek ending when it did is is pretty good timing for me. So um, I would look to take a bit of a break. Yeah. But um, as to what Steve was saying about the the group disbanding or whatnot um I've, I've also said before that this has been one of my favorite gaming experiences ever um if not the best gaming experience <laughs> ever um just because i the the people i've met and the way the game is the way the game's played out every single episode that we've had i don't know what to expect in style in narrative we've had some games that have been so hard to make decisions on because <laughs> because of just like the dilemmas that have just been sickening and we've just been frozen in choice and then we've had other games where we've just gone on a tangent about whether or not making meat with a replicator is okay for vegetarians thank you thank you for bringing that up that was one of my <laughs> other favorite things and i i i was i yes uh, that was one of my absolutely favorite digressions and um and it was, it was, it was all in earnest. Like we were, we were honestly we were thinking about it. It wasn't just, oh, let's have a laugh and talk about the tech. It was, <laughs> it was genuine. Now you know what it's like in Kevin's brain. You see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean I totally agree. And one of the, one of the things that, again, I just you know, I'll just say it, say it again is that one of the things that I've particularly appreciated about this game and this group is that I think Star Trek is a particular flavor and it's a particular, um, you know, um, there's Ooh. a particular thing about it. Yep. And it's very easy to get it wrong, I think. But I, I, I think we got it right. And I, I, I'm proud of the fact that there were, as, as Karen says, there were many sessions where, you know, you would have a decision to make and you found it, you know, genuinely found it hard to make a decision because you were trying to do the right thing in terms of the the setting you know this is not D D, and i'm not knocking D D, but this is not D D where you're like ah whatever we just kill them and take their stuff and you know there, there were sessions where you, you know there would be periods where you would be very genuinely earnestly talking about this stuff about you know what do we do and if we don't get this right this is going to be bad and, mm-hmm. and again that to me is the the the, the, the ultimate mark of quality of, of this campaign and of these players is that you know there's not one situation I don't think that wasn't played out in a in a Star Trek inverted commas way, and yeah. that if I saw it on a on an episode or a, in a in a book or a whatever, that I I would have questioned it and said, well, that doesn't really feel like Star Trek to me. And believe me, there's plenty of actual Star Trek where I've gone, that doesn't really feel like Star Trek to me. I'm looking <laughs> was, at you, JJ. That was, <laughs> that, was the, that was one of the things I really wanted was a, a proper Star Trek ending to it. Exactly. And that, that's exactly right. And we, Mike and I talked about this a bit. And again, you know, there, there was, you know, there was a possibility that the Vigilant would be destroyed. There was a possibility, you know, I'd, I'd not closed off any of those possibilities. Um, and the fact that you handled it the way you handled it, all of you and, and all of the characters, the way they handled Ooh. it and the resolution was the, the, the most satisfying thing. And again, that, that fact that over these, you know, seven and a bit years, uh, or just under seven years, um, that, you know, for the vast majority of those 60, 66, 67 episodes, um, they were Star Trek stories. And like I say, there are there are there are actual Star Trek shows that have got less episodes that are, are, to me are Star Trek. You know, again, mm. I'm looking at you, Discovery. You know, <laughs> there, there are more episodes. We got more episodes right, I think, than Discovery got right. And I'm not a Discovery basher, but I'm just saying, in terms of the tone, and again, as as Karen says, the fact that there were some tangents that were totally earnest, but you know, totally relevant, but were not, you know, strictly plot. But yeah. that to me is important. And and again, that's why I want to um, have another crack at it. And again, you know, I think I think the Dominion War setting would be an interesting one. I think there's again a lot of potential for um, you know hard choices to be made um, and um, you know drama to be had. 
uh, but also you know adventure and heroism and all of that stuff and i think that that's all uh, you know that's all sort of something that, that's waiting there to be exploited um so yeah i'm i'm excited for that possibility i mean, I mean to be fair you know kevin he talked to me about it the other day and i would kind of already come to that conclusion that i didn't think the vigilant was done because i, I love that ship you know more than i probably should um <laughs> and because it's, it's but it's because you've all made it real you know that that crew are very real to me um and i'm sure the next crew will be as well you know i'm sure tompkins will still be around somewhere because he going anywhere, he's really. now captain <laughs> Captain Tompkins, there you go. That would be a good in joke, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to say, really. So, I mean, we've 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 had your character wrap ups, which is fantastic. Um, we've we've had a little talk about what's come next, and I'm glad to hear everyone seems to be on board with that. I will post something on the group the next couple of days, so just that Kevin's up to speed. Has anyone got anything else they want to throw in before we call it a night? No. Mm, not not at the moment. I'm sure I can think of something in about 20 minutes, but at the moment, no. <laughs> well, we'll pop it in there. Pop it. I'll pop it on the WhatsApp group then. Mm. How about you, Sarah Jane? Anything you want to add? Or no, nothing for me that I can think of at this moment. But um, yeah, we'll keep the WhatsApp group going, won't we? Mm. Oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I I intend to fully keep that up. Um, and like I said, that'll probably become more active because we're not catching up in person every every three weeks for, for the short term but I'll, I'll definitely use that to uh get you up to speed with what's coming up um also do me a favor and well would you give my give my best to alex as well because again i just wanted to reiterate how what a great contribution i think he made definitely um to the to the time he was with us and i will do i will let do. him know it's really appreciated and again if he ever wants to jump back in again he's he's always welcome as far as i'm concerned so, i shall um, pass it on please pass it on for him and, and how about you karen have you got anything else you want to add um, I haven't, Steve. No, I, um, I think it's a good place to. I think we've, yeah. Cool. Yes, well, I'm listen. glad that you did this nice little final. Um, you know, get stuff off your chest, debrief. Yeah, thank session. you. I'm, I'm glad. I, I felt it was important. I didn't want. Well, it, it was. It was nice again. to just leave that session when we finished it. It's like right, just leave it done. Let's come back and once we've had time to think about it a bit more. So I'm glad you did it the way you've done it. And thank you. Yeah. And um, I, and I will I will see you in what two weeks for um the end of for, for some more Savage Worlds. That's right. If you're going to be there, I don't know if you're going to yep. be there, but if you will be there, I'll see you for that. Um, and the, uh, Sarah Jane, I'm sure I'll bump into you at work in the next <laughs> the next few weeks as normal. Yeah. And um, but as I say, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep talking on the WhatsApp group. So um, well, great. Well, with that, then I shall um thank you for your time tonight, guys, and um, I wish you all the all the best and have a nice break, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of Starship Vigilant. Kaz was played by Mike. Osterhagen was played by Kevin. Kalish was played by Kevin. Prux was played by Sarah Jane. And Davis was played by Alex. Our theme music is Fanfare for Space by Kevin MacLeod. See you next time.